No, I don't waste no time How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, social media marks and online coach. And uh, this video was requested to me by someone in the lifestyle design community, which is my free Facebook group uh, for basically agency owners. So if you are just starting out with social media marketing or you've already got a social media marketing agency and you want to connect with like-minded people and basically stay ahead of the curve when it comes to the latest changes uh, to the industry, then I highly recommend you check out my free Facebook group. It will be linked in the description box down below or on my header of my YouTube channel. There's also a link to it there. And anyway, the topic of today's video is the onboarding process and how that has changed with the new you know, policies with iOS 14 and so on and so forth. And just to basically clear up you know, how you are best getting access to everything because I still get a lot of questions about this and um, you know, obviously our whole onboarding process is completely automated. For those of you that are in my programs, you will have access to my own onboarding process. But for those of you that are not and are you know, just starting out um, and basically wanna onboard your first client, this is basically how you can do it. So just to make things clear to everyone, You've obviously got your own personal profile. Uh, we'll just call this PP for now. PP, there we go. Let me just make this pen size a bit larger just so it's a bit more uh, easier on the eye. So you've got your own personal profile and then below that you've got your own business manager, okay? So I know it's common sense now, but just to make it clear, we do not run ads from our own ad accounts, nor do we run ads with our own credit card, okay? so. Below our business manager, obviously you've got your own ad account, which you'll call ADC. So this is our sort of ecosystem, okay? That's what we like to call it. So you've got your own personal profile. So if you go to uh, facebook.com, so just regular facebook.com and you log in, you see your own profile, that is your personal profile. Attached to that is a business manager, which if you go to uh, www.business.facebook.com, you will see your business manager and then within your business manager, you have ad accounts, okay? So everything um, that I've just mentioned belongs to you. Your client has got a similar setup. So again, personal profile. So I'll just call this PPC, personal profile of the client. And then the client has their own business manager as well, BM clients. I'll just call it BM, just to keep it easy. And then they've got their own ad account. Okay, so now we need to get access to their assets because we wanna start running ads for them, right? Now, um, again, a common question that I get as well is do we need to have the login of the client's uh, personal profile? No, that is not the case, okay? So we do not log in as the client to access their assets. We get access by sticking to our own personal profile. And there's two ways of doing it and one way is not better than the other, it just depends on the situation. So situation number one is basically where you uh, run the ads yourself or it's just you in the business manager. Then what you can do is you can request access, admin access to the business manager. So the email address that you've used to log into your personal profile um, is usually also the same with you know, the one that you create your business manager with. You give that to the client and the client adds you to their business manager. So in their business manager, when they go to business info, you've obviously got two options. You've got people and you've got partners. So what they then need to do, if they want uh, to give you your personal profile admin access to their business manager, they go to people and then they add your email address and they give you admin access. Now this has a few pros to it because if you have admin access to their BM, you can basically see everything that is going on in their business manager. You can quickly give yourself access to their ad account. If they create a second ad account, uh, you can give yourself access to that as well. Um, if they have pixel issues, etc., you can see all of that. And you can also very easily see if everything is compliant. What do we mean by compliant? 
with the new iOS 14 updates, there's a few things that they need to do. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos, but I'll just briefly go over this again. Their personal profile and your personal profile, of course, needs to be verified. So what you need to do is you need to confirm your identification with Facebook. There's a way of doing this proactively, but the easiest way is just to wait for Facebook to tell you that they need your identity to be confirmed. You upload your ID and then within, usually within two working days, um, you'll gain access to all of your accounts, etc. again, and um, you know, your identity will be confirmed with Facebook. Also, quick side note, hypothetically speaking, let's say your personal profile gets restricted and you want to create a second personal profile, which is officially against advertising policies. An easy way of doing that is to go into your settings, remove your identification from personal profile one and then create personal profile two. And usually the second personal profile won't get taken down because now you've basically have not got an identity on Facebook. And then you, when you do get hit with the, uh, you need to confirm your identity on profile two, you can just upload your passport again and as if nothing has happened. So that's just a quick side note. Um, but anyway, their business manager needs to be verified, okay? So what they need to do is in their business info, so let's say this is the, the business settings page, BS, we all know what that stands for, but business settings in this case, they need to go to business info and then they need to basically fill out their business details and then request verification. If their verification uh, request button is grayed out, then what you need to do is you need to get them to create an app. The easiest way of doing it is just hopping on a quick call with them or showing them a video on how to do it. But what they need to do is they need to go to developers.facebook.com, then create an app attach it to their business manager and then refresh the page and that verification button is basically you know enabled so you can click on it then once they click on that uh, enable you know verification button then they'll need to basically provide facebook with a document that proves that they own the business and provide that uh, a document that proves that the address that they filled in is also the same as the address of the business so their business manager needs to be verified the second thing that they need to do is the domain that they run the ads on. So obviously, you know, these ad accounts, they run traffic to um, websites and the websites that you run ads to, um, we need to basically have to be verified. So the domain that you use, so let's say we've got a Shopify store, it's called, I don't know, um, what should we call it? John's, johnsmarsbars.com, I don't know. JohnsMarsBars.com needs to be verified. So what you need to do is you need to go to Brand Safety. So again, within your business manager in the business info, you go to Brand Safety, and then you verify the domain. So you fill out the domain. You don't use www. You just type in JohnsMarsBars.com, and then you'll be given three options. Go for the one where it says DNS settings, and then all you need to do is go into your host and provider. Um, go to the DNS settings and then basically add a TXT file uh, with you know the bit the string of code that Facebook provides. It's very very simple. There's a tons of videos on how to do this you know, on YouTube. I'm not going to bore you guys with the details. It'll take five minutes tops. Okay, so the, the, those are the two things that we need to do. We need to verify the business manager and we need to verify the domain. When I say we, I basically mean the client, okay? This is the client's responsibility, not yours. It's only your responsibility to make sure that they do it, okay? So do not stress out if this is not the case, if it is not verified, just tell them, listen guys, this needs to be done as soon as possible because Facebook will take down the business manager and say, uh, we have basically you know, uh, disabled this business manager because of unacceptable business practices, okay? That is what they call it, which means that you will not be able to run anything on this business manager. So tell the clients this uh, and tell them that they need to verify this business manager as soon as possible and also verify the domain. Once you've got the domain verified, we can then set up our events. So with iOS 14, again, I've explained this in previous videos, um, we need to tell Facebook what events we want to track under you know, any circumstances because now people can opt in and out of tracking. So what we need to do is we need to tell Facebook, okay, if people opt out, we still want to track one event you know, as much as we possibly can. So for those in the e-commerce space, it will be purchase. For those that are doing lead gen, it will probably be lead or complete registration. We'll just call it lead for now just to keep things nice and simple. 
So within the, so this is Events Manager, yeah? So within Brand Safety, you verify the domain and then you go to Events Manager and then you basically tell Facebook what events you want to track under you know, any circumstances. So those are the two sorts of things that you need to do to be compliant with iOS 14. And those are the things that you can check if you've got admin access. Okay, so this is scenario number one. Scenario number two, I'll just briefly move this up. I'll just recreate the, the structures again. So that's your personal profile. This is your BM, and then you've got your own ad accounts, etc. here. And then the client's got the same thing, right? So personal profile, BM, and ad account. And of course, the client can have multiple ad accounts, you know, it doesn't really matter. But what you can also do is you can request partner access to the business manager. So this was when they go to business, um, business info, you know, of their business manager, this is when they select people. Now, if they select partner, then what they need from you is your partner ID. And you'll find that in your business manager, in the business settings, under business info. Okay, it's just a long string of code of things like 10 digits. You'll need to give that to them. And then what they basically need to do is select the button where it says, um, and a partner has requested access to my assets. Um, they paste your partner ID in there. And then what they can do is they can select what assets they want you to be a partner on. So the ad accounts, the pixels, um, the events, the audiences, and so on and so forth, okay? So rather than you getting access to their business manager, your business manager get, gets access to their assets. Now, the con of this is anything that they do not give you access to, you need to request. So if a client gives you access to the business manager, the ad account, etc., but does not give you access to the pixel, you need to ask for the pixel because there's no way of you doing that. Uh, when you basically when you log into Facebook, you log into your business manager and you'll just see their assets as part of your business manager. The pro of this is that if you've got a media buyer or a freelancer or anything like that, and that person has access to your business manager, then they will see these assets as well, but the clients will not see it. So the client will just see, okay, um, XYZ agency has access to my assets, but they can't see who is under XYZ agency. So for those that uh, basically, you know, use our white label service, this is how we do it. So we've got, so this is, uh, I'll just call it Brand Panier. That's us. Then we've got the agency that is, uh, so in this case, it's our client really, but you know, that's you guys. And then you guys have the client. So the client gives access to all the assets you know, of, the, of the agency, and then we basically just get access to the agency's business manager. So all the client can see is the agency, and we are basically on the back end running the ads. So the client is none the wiser that we are actually running ads for the agency. The client thinks that you guys are doing it. We run the ads, we get the results, you guys take the glory, and we take you know, part of the retainer. That's how the white labeling works. But regardless if you use our white label service or if you've got your own media buyer or virtual assistants or anything like that, um, if they've got access or if you've got access to their business manager via partner access, they can't see. All they can see is the name of your agency. So this is probably the most professional way of doing it. But the uh, people version of it is probably the easiest because you can go in personally and grant yourself access to all of the events and the domains, etc. Okay, what you can also do, and that is basically what we do, is we do both. Okay, so we tell our clients, okay, we want partner access, but we also want personal access. Um, and then basically what we do is the partner access is, quick side notes, I run the ads anyway, so it's not like we have a media buyer or anything like that, I do this all myself. But what we do, because obviously it's not just me and the agency, I also want other people in my agency being able to see what I'm doing, what's going on in the ads manager, etc. And of course, if something happens to my profile, I want to be able to quickly get access to all of the other assets via a different profile. So if I log in as my girlfriend or something like that on Facebook, I can quickly you know, get access to all the assets again. So what we do is we tell the client to give uh, our agency partner access, me, admin access and then if the client hasn't done anything uh, properly or hasn't done a certain you know feature of the access properly because i am admin i can just quickly go in and uh, give or grant you know admin access to whatever i need and whatever i want 
okay? So that is basically how you can do it. So uh, people where they can basically fill out your email address and give you admin access to all of the assets or partner access where you basically need your business manager ID, give that to the client and then the client can select what assets he wants you to have access to, okay? Now, going forward, like I said, um, you know, just to wrap this video up, all the business managers need to be verified, okay? All the domains need to be verified and we need to select an event. And if you do not do this, yes, the business managers will get taken down. So that is just something that it's very, very important that you do because if the client pays your retainer, you get access to the client's accounts, you run an ad for a day, the ad account gets taken down, um, you know, you need to verify it, the whole process takes a couple of weeks, You've, they've basically paid for one day of your service and you are three weeks down the line, you still haven't got, uh, or you still haven't been able to run another ad and that is when it starts to get messy, right? The client will either request a refund or wants to push the second payment back and so on and so forth. So that is where it starts to get a bit, uh, a bit messy. So what you're best doing is mentioning in your onboarding process that they need to be iOS 14 compliant. So like I said, those of you that are in the program, you obviously have my own onboarding process where I dissect exactly you know, what they need to do. And then once we get access to the client's assets and the client is onboarded within our agency, everything is good to go and we can hit the ground running, okay? So that is all I've got for today's video. Like this video if you got something out of it. Leave a comment down below if you have any more tips and tricks with regards to getting, you know, basically access to the client's assets and so on and so forth. Also, leave a comment down below what other videos you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.